we started Space Ape, things were definitely smaller. We were only 12 people, now we're 55. We we're new to building mobile games, but had a lot of experience building games in general. We just needed to learn very quickly, so we needed to use it as a learning platform as well as making a really great game for our users. We'd all been kicking around ideas for what would make a great combat strategy game, and really we just loved Japan, and we loved Japanese and Eastern fantasy. Samurai Siege is about building and battling. You build a fortress, you increase its strength, and you try and defend it against other players who are trying to steal resources from you. And you, in turn, battle them and steal their resources. We had fairly modest ambitions for Samurai Siege when we kicked things off. We launched it initially in Australia and New Zealand. Then we had about a six-week beta period. Within two weeks of putting the game live on beta, we were already making $10,000 a day gross. And so we went live globally and within a month we had about 300,000 people daily, about a million and a half people playing the game monthly. And at that point we really knew that we were onto something. These days we make about $55,000 a day. It spikes on weekends. Our biggest day we made $220,000, know, which is both a small number if you compare it to some of the biggest game companies out there, but pretty cool if you're 18 or 24 months old and you're just getting off the ground with one of your first titles. So we're pretty thrilled with it. Android, part of our revenue has been growing. It's 50%. Uh, a lot of the growth is coming from our focus on Asia. 10 to 15% of our revenue, I think, comes from Japan alone. We always intended to take Samurai Siege to Japan. We just wanted to make sure that we got it right because we knew we had one shot at one of the world's largest gaming markets. We spent four months preparing Japan for launch and the game had been live pretty much everywhere else. One of the reasons is we spent a long time to localize our game and culturalize our game, just have a really high quality translation. We learned how users see advertisements. We learned what they thought about the game. We spent a month in beta in Japan testing it. So we had to find people who would like our game locally who could be sort of ambassadors for us. So when we were live, they were really the voice of our players in Japan. The alpha or beta testing feature in the Google Play development console is a good way to go. So you can hand select a group of people that are associated with a Google group, and then you can start getting feedback from users. You start seeing how your game performs in the real world. For our marketing material on the Google Play Store, we wanted it to look like a local Japanese company had created it which really meant more exclamation marks and uh, cooler character drawings. We used our internal Japanese staff to tell us how it should look, and we got it together. Turns out it looks really cool, looks really exciting. Google Play has been a great platform to develop with. I've really enjoyed the fast iteration speed and the way that Google think about bringing games to the Google Play Store and working with the partnership team there. Experience has been great with Google Play. We have found that it is about half of our audience and, and half of our business. Thrilling as it has been to have the success we've had to date, the thing that we're really looking for, that next step is down the road. I think that's what keeps people going in gaming is it's always the thrill of working on the next game and seeing it go live. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one.